Hello, and thank you for joining me here at Why the Book Wins. My name is Laura, and today I am talking about the new movie Apartment 7A, which is a straight to streaming release directed by Natalie Erica James, and it is a prequel to Rosemary's Baby. And I recently did a Rosemary's Baby book versus movie video, so you should definitely check that out if you have not already. And I will begin with my spoiler free thoughts on this movie before then moving into spoilers. And like I said, this was a straight to streaming release, but now after having watched it, I'm really disappointed they did not release release this in theaters because I actually really liked this movie and I would have loved to have seen it on the big screen. It captivated me right from the start and when I'm watching a movie at home, a way that I judge how good a movie is to some extent is whether or not I'm tempted to pick up my phone, right? Because the movie is not interesting that much and so I just want to pick up my phone and answer texts or whatever. But while watching this movie, I never wanted to touch my phone because again, I was just so enthralled right from the start. I would give this three and a half half stars, maybe four, but prob I, I guess more like a three and a half. And so, yeah, it's not like the five star movie that Rosemary's Baby was, but again, I still really liked it. I also went into it with low expectations, so that also could have been what caused me to be pleasantly surprised by it. But I think the set design was great, the performances were amazing, and the movie really created this disquieting ambiance. And like Rosemary's Baby, which rested on the shoulders of Mia Farrow, this rests on Julia Gardner, and I had never seen her in anything before, but she was incredible. The supporting cast, I will say, weren't quite as good as the supporting cast of Rosemary's Baby, and in particular, I was not a fan of Diane. I think her name is Diane Wiest. I think that's how you say her last name. She plays Mini Castavets, and it seemed like she was just trying to do a Ruth Gordon impersonation, and it felt distracting at times the way she talked, and so she has her moments. Like, there wasn't any performance that ruined the movie for me, but I did think her in particular, I wasn't liking it quite as much. Ruth Gordon, of course, is just iconic in that role. But yeah, Julia Garner, she was fantastic. I was blown away by her performance, to be honest. I need to find more stuff with her because yeah, she was amazing. And in general, I just found this movie sufficiently creepy and eerie and unsettling and all of those scary things you want out of a movie like this. And it might not have captured that growing dread quite as much as Rosemary's Baby did. And then I will say like, the scene was definitely more horrifying in Rosemary's Baby. And I have an issue with that scene's equivalent here, which I will get into in spoilers, but regardless, I still found it <laughs> disturbing and unsettling enough. And in Apartment 7A, our main character is a dancer and I loved the dance sequences. And there is a scene in particular near the end that I thought was fantastic. And I will get into it more in the spoiler section, but it was just such a powerful scene. And honestly, while watching it, it made me feel emotional and I got a little teary. And even just thinking about it like is like bringing back those emotions all over again. And while I have seen a number of Letterboxd reviews say that like this is marketed as a prequel, but really it's just a remake because it's the same premise as Rosemary's Baby. It's just a different woman. And so I do get why people say that. And while of course there are a lot of similarities between the two stories, I feel like there's still enough different that it kept my interest and it's still worth watching. To wrap up my spoiler free thoughts, I loved this movie and I would definitely watch it again. And I would highly recommend it. I have also heard some people compare it to Suspiria because that movie deals with witches and dancing. And I have not yet watched Suspiria, so maybe if I had seen that movie, I would have been like, oh, this is just a remake of Rosemary's Baby with some Suspiria added in. But I've never seen Suspiria, so maybe that worked in my favor with how much I liked Apartment 7A. Honestly, I have been too scared to watch either versions of Suspiria, but the new one is directed by Luca Guadagnino, who I love. So maybe one of these days I'll brave it and watch both of those. But to move right on to spoilers now. So yes, Apartment 7A follows Terry, a character we are introduced to in Rosemary's Baby. And we actually get a scene where we see Rosemary walk into the basement laundry where she had met Terry in the original. And so we see her walk in, but we don't actually get a recreation of that scene and we never actually see Rosemary's Rosemary's face, but I did like that we see her walk in in that moment. And yeah, if you know the original story, you know that Terry will die in the end. But again, that's part of what adds to the different spin on this story because yeah, it's the same deal with a coven trying to get a woman to carry the child of Satan. And yet, you know, going into this one, you know they won't succeed. So that right there makes it different enough, right? And just to start with the ending, so when she realizes what is happening, she tries to get rid of the baby a number of ways, but she is unable to. Like she literally can not control what is happening. And earlier when she is asked why she loves dancing, 
dancing, she says, dancing was my escape. All I had to do was move my body in a certain way and everything bad in the world would disappear. It's the only time I felt like I had control over my life. And so in the end, when she's tried to get rid of the baby, but she can't, she's kind of acting like she just accepts this as it is. And so Minnie and Roman take her into this room where like all of the witch coven are hanging out and the witch members are there hailing her and Satan. And she joins in albeit unenthusiastically. Uh, but then from here, she starts to dance. And this line from earlier comes back to mind because she is not in control of her life or her body. And so she dances as a way to make the bad in the world disappear. And also so that she can feel in control of something. And then at the end of the dance, she drops herself out the window because she knows that the only way she can stop what is happening is to kill herself. And yeah, I just thought the scene was fantastic. Like it worked so well for me and her dancing knowing what was coming is what was making me feel emotional. And also at the end of her dance, she does that jump move that we had seen her do at the start of the film. And this jump is what causes her to injure her foot, which I didn't talk about, but she is a dancer slash actor. And at the start, she injures her foot, which causes her to struggle getting work. And she also gets hooked on prescription pills. And so when she is outside the Bramford, she is like woozy after having taken too many of these pills. And that is when Minnie and Roman find her. But yeah, so the fact that she then ends her dance with this move also seems significant. And yeah, Terry killing herself, like it's so tragic and heartbreaking. And yet she was also so strong, right? And like she stood up to them and she wouldn't allow this to happen. And she put a stop to it in the only way she could. And even though they claimed they would give her the fame and the success that she desired, this was not how she wanted fame, right? And the the only way that she could get back in control of her body and her life in this whole situation was to end her life. But earlier I said that that main scene with the devil, I didn't like as much here. Like I didn't find it as effective here as I did in the original. And part of that is because there is this upbeat song playing and I get there's supposed to be some sort of unsettling dichotomy between this horrendous thing that is happening and this song that is playing but it just didn't work for me and it made the scene not as effective. And so I wish they wouldn't have done that <laughs> personally. But I will say that scene is what was so disturbing in the original movie and it even like made it hard for me to go to sleep the night after I watched it. And this movie here, I watched this movie last night and last night while I was in bed, there were a few times in the middle of the night when I would see flashes of this scene. And so it did get to me and get under my skin, maybe not quite as much as the original. But again, like I said, it was sufficiently disturbing, I would say. And also the guy who Whose baby she thinks she's having is a man who had worked on the play she was wanting to be cast in and he lives in the Bramford and so Minnie and Roman set her up with him so she can get cast in the play and when she is with him he drugs her drink and when she wakes up it seems like they have had sex like they had a one night stand but she has no memory of it but after this she then gets the part and eventually she even gets cast in the lead and so this guy who she thinks is the father he is part of her life in a way right because he's working on this play she's in. He's, he lives in the same building, but it was not the same level of intimacy as we had between Guy and Rosemary, Guy being Rosemary's husband. And so it's interesting because we see that this coven has tried to get the son of Satan a few times now, right? Before Terry, there was another girl we hear about. And Terry and the previous woman, they were both single. And so it's interesting to think about how the time it actually worked was with Rosemary. And the key factor is the fact that Rosemary had a husband, right? Who was in on it and he betrayed Rosemary. And so I think that's so interesting because Minnie and Roman probably thought that a single woman is the best option, thinking that a husband would only make things harder. When in reality, the one with the husband is the time that it worked. And so I just think that <laughs> seems really significant. And someone commented on my Rosemary's Baby video saying like, man, like who her Ira Levin? Because he really hates husbands because he portrays them in such a bad light on more than one occasion. And yeah, I again, I think it's really saying something. The fact that the time it actually works is when the woman has a husband who is willing to betray his own wife in order to get what he wants. And again, in Rosemary's Baby, Guy agrees to do this to Rosemary because they tell him that they will help him have a successful career. Whereas here, Terry is the one. I mean, Guy agreed to give them Rosemary. Whereas here, Terry does not agree to allow her body to be violated. Violated is like not even the... It feels like you need a more intense word for what happens to her. But she does not agree to this. It is after the fact, after they've already done it, that they promise her 
fame and success essentially, right? But it is interesting that here she is the one that has promised the success and she does start to get the success. But I kind of think that even if she had delivered the baby and given it to them, I don't think they would have looked out for her the way they claimed they would have. Like she was just seen as a vessel. And even though Rosemary's baby ends with them all saying, hail Rosemary. And even here we get a scene where they're saying, hail Terry. At the end of the day, they don't actually care about her and they don't see her as anything other than a tool to achieve their goals. So again, I think they make these promises, especially to the, to the women, right? Like they make these promises to Terry but I don't think they would have upheld them after she did what they wanted her to do, right? And also in Rosemary's baby, Rosemary wanted to be pregnant, right? She and Guy were trying to have kids. And so when she gets pregnant, she's very happy. And this is a good thing, despite you know, all of the bad stuff that happens and the pain she's in. But here, that's another key difference is the fact that she did not want a baby, right? She is trying to focus on her career. And right away when she finds out she is pregnant, she debates whether or not she wants to keep it. But ultimately th the cast of convince her like, hey, like give birth to this baby and we'll adopt it. We'll take it from you. That way you don't need to worry about raising it on your own. But still that that is another change that I think makes this one significantly different enough from Rosemary's baby where we have a character who didn't want to be pregnant. And near the end, she even tries to get an abortion, but she ends up kicking the lady. And it seems like the baby even does something to make the lady go weird so it doesn't work out. And then later on, she also tries to stab her belly, but there is a force preventing her from being able to do this. And so her not being in control of what happens to her own body is on full display in this movie. And again, she is only seen as a vessel for carrying this child. And no matter how much she does not want this to happen, there is nothing she can do because other people are the ones calling the shots. And I just really felt that stress and that tension and that, yeah, just, I just really felt that in this movie, right? The fact that she wants so badly to get this out of her, especially when she realizes what has happened, right? That's when she tries to go get rid of it is when she talks to that nun and the nun reveals the plans that this coven has. And so, yeah, you just really feel that so much in this version where she is wanting to get rid of it and it's not in her power. It's not in her control and there's nothing she can do, like I said earlier, except to end her own life in order to be rid of it. And so that aspect, yeah, I found it very effective. But also I wanted to say that in this version, she has a friend who I loved. I loved their scenes together and she buys a scarf for this friend. And then in the end, we see Minnie wearing what looks like the same scarf. And so we don't know for sure, but it kind of seems to imply that they did something to this friend, right? And this coven, they want whatever woman they choose, they want her to be isolated. And so it makes sense that they would do something to get rid of this friend. But I like that in the movie, we don't know for sure, right? It's just like this unsettling detail where you're like, wait, what? Like, why is Minnie wearing that scarf? scarf. Like, is that just a coincidence or did they do something to the friend? And so I love that we're just left to wonder and we don't know for sure. But also before I end, I wanted to mention Mrs. Gardenia who had lived in the apartment before Rosemary and Guy and she is here too. And we see her and Minnie having an argument. And then after when Terry is pregnant, she shows up in Terry's apartment and tries to kill her in order to put a stop to things because she has changed her mind. And she's like, I don't want to be part of this. I want to stop this. And ultimately she do does not succeed and she ends up in the hospital in a coma. But yeah, we knew from Rosemary's baby that she had a falling out with these people. And so I did like how we see that happening here in this movie. Uh, but yeah, I guess that wraps it up on my thoughts on Apartment 7A. Like I said, I was pleasantly surprised and I really, really liked this movie and I would highly recommend it. Yes, in many ways, it's just a rehash of Rosemary's baby. But again, the performances, especially by Julia Gardner, were fantastic. And so yeah, I would highly recommend it. And I think it's worth watching and there's enough different here from Rosemary's Baby. Also, I don't know if I mentioned it, but in this version, the guy who she thinks is the father, she ends up killing him in the end. So I hadn't expected that. But anyway, that was satisfying, right? Because Guy is so horrible in the original and you wish he would die, but he didn't. So at least here in this version, this guy does die. So yeah, anyway, let me know your thoughts on Apartment 7A. Did you like it as much as I did? Whether you did or didn't, share down below in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe if you have not already.